the story begins at the hospital of my birth. My parents didn't even show up. Fuck it, assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Dagling, the train of the birds and all the welcome back to Tennessee's Dust Thing. The thing everyone asks about, everyone asks in every comment section about when this game is coming back. It totally isn't annoying at all. <laughs> After I walked around for a bit on my own, I noticed the time we agreed to meet was coming close to our arriving. Once I got to the agreed upon meeting place, I decided to stand around with my hands in my pockets and just watch the students passing by while I waited. Even though there were probably a lot of students who decided they couldn't be bothered to show up today, the place still feels so much livelier than usual. Somehow, even though I tend to hate crowds, watching all these students my own age walking around with their friends and having fun kind of makes me feel... I don't know. Kind of ease. Weird feeling. Oh! That's you. Thank you. <laughs> of course, my pleasant, relaxed mood is soon interrupted by this troglodyte that I call my childhood friend with a now commonplace loud greeting. Hey, Sai Chan. You're here early. So are you. I guess that's true. How come you're not wearing your uniform? Sajan looks down at herself, examining her own clothes front and back. I think to myself, why would she would even need to do this, given that she's the one who got dressed. She should know what the hell she's wearing. I guess I just wanted to be comfy. You guess. Yeah. You're way too simple-minded. Hey, Rutherford Coon. Have you been enjoying the festival so far? God, my laptop's really warm. I don't know, I don't know, that's a problem. My fans are not broken. It's pretty good. Although I think I prefer the one we had last year. Really? That one was kind of dull for me. That's just because you got stuck behind a desk for most of it and couldn't go around exploring. Ah, you remembered. It's not exactly a hard thing to remember, after all. Man, I'm really pumped right now! Really? How come? Well, first of all, there's a bonfire dance. I don't want to miss that. Ironic that you would say that, considering you've never been to it in the last two years. Well, sure, but this year I actually have someone to dance with me, so as per school tradition, I'll attend. School tradition? Yeah, don't you remember? They say that two people who dance together on the bonfire will be tied together forever. Oh, that's uh, more of a platonic thing. Most of the people who do it are friends. There are a few couples who do it, too. I guarantee you most of these couples will be broken up before the year is over. <laughs> Probably. Uh, that's not all I'm excited about. Did you hear the news about June Coon? What news? Well, apparently some kind of brand contracted the school, contacted the school principal today to talk about sponsoring the school's music club. Hey, that's pretty big. I wonder what brought that up. Apparently, Jun Kun took part in a competition yesterday and won. Oh, yeah, he did. How'd you know? But, so you knew? Kinda. I found out about it last week, but June didn't want to tell anyone. I snuck in anyway to cheer for him. I can't believe you didn't tell me! If I, if you'd shown up, you would have missed Shuichi's competition just like I did. Oh, damn, you're right. It's not an idea I recommend. Yeah, I can imagine. Shuichi was the one who told me about it. Then this morning I heard from Gyochan about the sponsorship. How does she know? She's the principal's granddaughter, remember? Oh, uh, yeah. That's still, this is the kind of thing that you'd share with your granddaughter. Shouldn't this kind of thing be kept a bit more confidential? I don't see the big deal. He probably just remembered she goes to the same class as Junkun and decided to tell her about it. I still think there was a real lack of tact. That's rich, come from the one, the most tactless person I know. Hey! It's true. I grumble, kicking a bit of dirt from the ground. 
Saya stares at me as if the whole thing were very amusing to her. Ah, oh, look, here come the boys. And there are the boys, indeed. Uh, June looks awfully upset. Case K looks his usual perturbed self. And Shuichi is the right amount of denial in him to enjoy things while uh, also at the same time feeling terrible but not letting anyone else know. So, uh, same as usual. I look up on Q with her announcement, seeing the three of them walking out of the main building. Shuichi smiles and waves once he realizes we see them. This is surprising. Do you three meet up on the stairs or something? Not exactly. Urata and I met up inside, but we decided to fetch Kobayashi first. He looked like he was really overwhelmed trying to wait on tables. He was jumping from one place to the other in a hurry. It was really funny. It's not exactly something you should be laughing about, you ass. I look over at June, who is still taking deep breaths with beads of sweat, you, rolling down his brow and mixing in with his ew. You okay? You don't look so good. I'm fine, it's just... <laughs> I didn't realize how hot it would get in the classroom once the burners were all on and we had a bunch of people inside. The place isn't even close to being packed, though. Only half the tables are occupied. If this is too much for you, then you're gonna suffer tomorrow. Don't say that. Kind of think of it, the whole thing might be hell for a guy that is afraid of crowds. Waiting tables might have been a bad idea, June. Rutherford-san, you don't need to worry about me, how I'm going to be fine. But I, I didn't say anything. It's written all over your face. Wow, he's right. You look like a wrinkly old lady. Watch it, floppy ears. What did I do? <laughs> Not you, the other floppy ears. Rutherford-san, calling someone floppy ears is a bit offensive, you know. Like I care. Rutherford-san, you shouldn't be mean to Keisuke-san. I already said I wasn't talking to Kay-kun. I don't know about you guys, but I really don't feel like standing around the entrance watching other people have fun. Yeah, you're right. We should go have some fun. I can't wait to see what the festival is like in there. The five of us then start walking while we chat, taking quick looks at interesting booths in between conversation. I wonder if we're going to see the, the uh, Wolfstar Sins in Paradise pins again. By the way, Jun-kun, what was your old school's festival like? It was much more sedate. The school didn't have all that many students to begin with. It's probably one of the reasons I'm so bad at dealing with crowds. It was always kind of lonely there. So there wasn't anything you liked about the school festival there? Something I liked. Hmm. Oh, I remember the fireworks display there was always pretty nice. Fireworks, huh? So you're the type that likes those? Yeah, I love them. Oh, hey. Guess I won't be the only one who enjoys them this year then. The only one. These three aren't really fond of fireworks. Hey, that's a little unfair. I like them. They're very pretty. I just need to use earplugs because they hurt my ears. I have the same problem. My hearing is kind of sensitive, so the fireworks really hurt. I prefer to be indoors when they happen. They are pretty mad for me. Maybe it's because I'm colorblind. What? You're colorblind? Oh, I didn't tell you. You rarely ever talk about yourself in the first place, Ayachan. You're pretty much a minor character at this point. <laughs> well, I guess that's true. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to hear. I really don't think being colorblind is why. Even with that, the fireworks should still be pretty. Not that you can attest with the certain with, with that with certainty, since you're not colorblind yourself. I suppose that's true. You don't need to worry about it, June Coon. I don't think I'm missing something or anything. I don't think I'm missing something or anything like that. It doesn't bother me much. Mizuguchi-san. Oh, hey. There's someone game memorabilia here. Man, I feel like we've seen this whole fucking scene before. Are we about to... <sighs> I'm gonna skip ahead real quick. Yeah, it's just the fucking... It's just the Wolfstar fucking... I mean, I don't want to say just the Wolf Star because this is really fucking like, cool that the Wolf Star characters are getting a, a reference. Uh, but we've seen this scene before, so I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit, <coughs> keeping an eye out for anything that I feel <laughs> feel like is different. Oh, I'm fucking dying! I'm fucking dying. May the thirtieth Tuesday.
I stand around with my back against the wall, impatiently tapping my feet against the floor. Pull my phone out to look in time, realizing it's only been, it's already been about 15 minutes since I, uh, since the agreed upon time. 2.30. That's when June's shift was supposed to end. We had agreed through messages yesterday that we'd go around together, just the two of us, since the other, since the other all said that they were too busy to leave. The other from Adastra confirmed for Tennessee's. It's all connected, man. It's all in the same universe. Furry visual novel, multiverse, Disney, 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 Disney. And yet, there was still no sign of the tiger. I don't want to go inside the classroom and get yelled at by either Kyoko or Ayako for not helping around, so I chose to wait outside. A little ways away from our class. <laughs> Still, got my ass peeled on the door the whole time and nothing. How come every time I set something up with June, I always end up waiting? Maybe I should start to schedule with him fifteen min with him fifteen minutes before I actually show up, so I won't have to wait so long. Then knowing how he is, he'd be likely to arrive right on time if I did that, and then complain that I was late. I sigh, rubbing my forehead as I feel a tiny bit of frustration building up. Just want to go around to the festival and have some fun with a friend, not wait around the door like a glorified bouncer. My ears twitch when I hear the sound of the door opening. Hey, there he is. Turn my head to look, and sure enough, see June looking around the hallway for me. Over here. Call out to him, waving my left arm. A few heads among the crowds walking around during the hall to due to me due to the sudden noise, but I decided to ignore him. I can imagine the place is much, much more packed than it was yesterday. Part of me is all is really worried how June is going to react to the whole thing. Since he started his shift first thing in the morning, there weren't that many people around when he arrived. I hope it hasn't been too hard on him today. Rutherford son, good afternoon. He walks up to me with a cheerful smile on his face. I can see his tail swishing around behind him. I guess even if he's calm right now, he can still feel all the people around. I make a mental note and try to avoid any really crowded areas. Good afternoon. How was work? Bleh, <laughs> it was hard. Well, I figured that much. No matter what I no matter what, I just can't picture you doing that well as a waiter. Still, that'd be way too cruel to say out loud, so I'll keep it to myself. By the way, you're not wearing your uniform today? Nah, most students only wear it during the first day, so they're allowed inside. We have teachers standing by the gates to make sure only students and sh staff show up then. But Mizuguchi-san wasn't wearing a uniform. Yeah, I have no idea how she got in. Probably brought her other clothes in her bag and switched out of her uniform. That's a lot of work just to avoid being in a uniform. Not that I can blame her. The uniform is too stuffy and uncomfortable. With lots of people walking around the entire time, it can get a bit hot. Especially since we're just a few days away from the start of summer and the temperatures are already going up a bit. I don't really mind wearing the uniform. By the way, why don't you switch out of your waiter uniform? There's got to be an oven inside that thing. No, I like it. Tiger hugs his arms close to his body, taking a step away from me and shooting me a weird look. His tail lashes behind him. You have beads of sweat rolling down your face and stains on your stomach and chest. That's because we're really hot inside the restaurant. Ayakasan said she was going to have a bunch of, of wall-mounted fans installed this afternoon to make things a little less unbearable for the guests. For the guests. They only stick around for 30 minutes at most. You should be worrying about your classmates who have to work inside that scorching heat for the most of the day. Devil woman. Why are you even that worried about continuing to wear this thing? That's because you have another shift in a few hours and don't want to have to get it changed again? Not really, it's just... Just... Well, I won't have another chance to wear this again once the festival is over, will I? And it looks so good, too. Can't you just take it home with you and wear it around whenever you want? Rutherford, son, we weren't given this. This is a rental. Oh. I guess I can understand a little better why he's being so stubborn. I mean, he's being annoyingly stubborn, but it's a bit more acceptable, all things considered, I think. Anyway, how about we go around checking the other classes? I really want to see what they've done. 
Sure. How about I take you to some of the ones I've already seen and quite liked? Yes, please. Lead the way. I take us down a couple of flights of stairs to a different classroom that was having an event I found a bit fun. It was also a restaurant-like event, since those are kind of really easy to do and are all really popular with the guests, but still different from our own class. Class 1E. Why doesn't that sound fam Why does that sound familiar to me? Oh, hey, it's, um... Them. Once, we take a, once we've taken a seat, a panda walks up to us, plopping a fancy laminated menu in front of us and smiling widely. Welcome to Avenue 9. I'm Sora, and I'll be your server today. What can I help you with? But June and my eyes go wide when we see him, suddenly surprised by the familiar face. Ah, that's right, when he was Sorkun's classroom. He sputters out those words, ignoring the fact that there's no point in pointing out what has already been made so obvious. Sora pouts slightly, looking down at us with a pitiful, pitiable eyes. Oh, you mean you didn't come here just to see me? That's sad. <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't mean... The panda bellows out a laugh, giving June a tap on the back and smiling brightly at us. It's alright, I was teasing you a bit, senpai. He sticks out a tongue and closes his left eye in a cheeky gesture, making June laugh beside me. I'm surprised to see you here. I came by yesterday and you weren't around. I didn't even know it was your class. Panda smile dims a little once he turns to look at me and suddenly looks a bit more uncertain. Oh, well, I wasn't on shift yesterday, so... The thing I'm most surprised about is how you're managing to work as a waiter, sora -kun. What do you mean? Sora peers down at June, cocking his head to the side, his emerald green eyes shining with curiosity. His panda shifts around, putting one of his hands inside of his, the, the pocket of his striped jacket. I'm surprised he can walk around with those bulky headphones everywhere without cable catching on anything. I mean, you're not exactly very good with people. You're really shy, after all, and you're kind of clumsy. Who the fuck are you talking to? A mirror? Both of us stare incredulously at the tiger. So and I both look at each other, dumbstruck by the words we just heard. It's official. June doesn't have an ounce of self-awareness. Hmm... I guess you might be right. I decided to take this role since I wanted to practice my people skills. It's been really fun despite a few setbacks. The bear laughs, his voice sounding very unrestrained and happy. That's not what I was doing. <laughs> like, it's kind of funny to me how we're, how much more comfortable he is when he's addressing June. Every time he sees me or talks to me, he tense it up, tenses up something fierce. But as soon as he turns to look at June, he noticeably relaxes. I guess June has that power on people. Might be a clumsy, air-headed, silly, and sometimes slightly stupid guy, but there is something about him that improves people's moods whenever he's around. Anyway, I can't spend too much time chatting. Why don't you guys take a look around at, at the menu and, and decide what you want? We nod, picking up the two menus he'd laid down on the table we, when we arrived. Cheesecake, cake, and drink. Damn. Damn. Damn, boy! It's just as simple as I remember it being. Not many options. Easy to remember and still looking kind of fancy. Whoa, it's all desserts in here. Yes, our cafe's focus is it, solely on cakes and cheesecakes. We don't have too many options, but they're all homemade and good quality. We have two sisters in our class and that are daughters of a patissier. Oh, so that's why the stuff here is so good. They got their dad to prepare all the sweets. So a chuckle shaking his head sideways in amusement. Nah, no, they made them from scratch themselves. They're really good bakers, too. I whistle, impressed by the skill these freshmen seem to have. I guess this school really is filled with impressive people. Do you guys know what you'll be ha having? Uh, oh, oh, shit. Oh. Okay, uh... I didn't do that. 
in case you're wondering. It was, well, I don't know. The option seems to, before you even say they're expensive, just know I'm going to be treating you. Are you sure? Of course. It's only fair. I'm the one who invited you to come here. Uh, okay. I watched June's tail swishing contentedly back and forth behind him. The sight makes me giggle. For some reason, my chest feels very light right now. Hmm. I still don't know what to order. I know. Rutherford's on order for me. But me? Are you sure? Mm, I am confident you know what I like well enough. Not to mention you've been here before. I think you make a better choice than I could. Faster too. Um, all right. Just don't complain if you get if you don't like what I ordered. <laughs> I won't. So, somehow I doubt it. I pick up June's menu and put it together with mine, looking up to the hand them to Sorokun. When I see his face again, I notice him looking between the two of us with a big, goofy smile on his face. Is something the matter? No, nothing. I, I was just thinking over s some stuff. Just laugh it off, but it's visibly awkward. Still, I decide to shrug and ignore it, making my order instead. Last time I've been here, last time I've been here, I got some cake, so this time I think I'll go with a cheesecake. Besides, if I get something both June and I like for myself, then I can share it with him later. I'm sure you'd like that too. For me, I'll get... Ah, oh, fuck me! Fuck me in the bunghole, man! I didn't remember, I didn't know we were supposed to be paying attention to what kind of fruit he liked. I just thought he was big enough fruit himself, I didn't have to remember that kind of thing. Boy, howdy, I don't know how I'm gonna answer this one, bro. Didn't he like lime? I'm personally fine with any of these three flavors of cheesecake, so even someone as indecisive as me doesn't mind uh, trouble choosing here. Okay, I'll have the... Oh. Okay, so that was for me. I got lime. But we were gonna share it with him later. I chose lime because I thought at the sweet shop maybe- no, that was green tea. I don't think we've ever had any of those things with him before. And the only thing that's shared between these two choices was strawberry. So I'll go with strawberry for me, and I'll do strawberry for him too. Might as well. Maybe. I don't know what he likes. It's gotta be strawberry. It was a while ago, but I remember that June likes strawberries. I hope you're not fucking lying to me, you motherfucker. That's why I ordered the strawberry cheesecake, after all. I was totally bullshitting, so I feel like the game might be playing me right now. But either way, uh, if I got that right, that'd be awesome. I'm sure this is the ideal choice. Now I'm less sure. And a strawberry shortcake for June. Uh huh. June's face changes to one of astonishment, staring at me with an open mouth. Let me guess, you probably think it's strawberry is one of my favorites. How did you know, weren't you? June nods slowly. <laughs> it was kind of a while ago, but... Do you remember when I bought you the stuff at Ayaka's shop? I know, I knew it! Yeah. Back then, the sweet you picked the most of was the strawberry shortcake. You picked enough that even if you're... Both your parents got it, you'd still have a slice. So, I figured that probably meant you like strawberry. Or at least strawberry shortcake. Well, that's amazing, Rutherford son. I couldn't remember all that stuff even if I tried. I didn't! That was pure fucking luck! <laughs> gotcha. Anything to drink? What about it, June? No need for me to choose it for you again. Need me to choose it for you again? Nah, I've got no problem choosing what to drink, so Arcoon, I'll have some orange juice. Oh, not strawberry. I like it, but strawberry on strawberry feels a bit much, no? <laughs> Fair enough. So Arcoon writes down our order on a pad of paper he pulled out of his pocket, looking up from it to stare at me. What about you, you Hazan? I'll have a grape soda. Hey, good fucking choice. I'll have some grape myself if I'm fucking hungry. He finishes jotting it down and slips the pad back into his packet looking at us. Nodding at us. All right, your order will be out in a minute. The panda walks to the back of the room where the... Or a class... Glass... 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 Gas... Glass display case was neatly tucked away, showing off all the cakey goodness inside. 
How they managed to get something so big and heavy inside the building, I have no idea. People are already throwing out their backs trying to get the burners and propane tanks into the class, uh, into our class, and those aren't nearly as heavy. Then again, they don't have to go up a bunch of flights of stairs to get here. Eh, never mind, they got it easy. By the way, June, how was the table tending you been going? How has the table tending been going? Pretty okay for the most part. I only had one rude customer, but as soon as he started getting difficult to handle, I Kassan showed up and glared at him until he left. <laughs> so she's playing the part of the bouncer now. Uh, are you having fun doing it? Well, uh oh. Something wrong? Not exactly wrong. It's just I really didn't think it'd be this stressful. Having to deal with customers, memorize orders, get them to the right table, not spill any food, try to act cheerful the whole time. It's a lot. I don't want to be that guy, but I did tell you all this before you chose to ignore me and sign up for it anyway. Why do you think so, many, so few people are signing up for it? What do you mean by memorize orders? Sometimes people can order a lot of stuff, and it's hard to remember it all correctly. But why would you have to remember it? How mess am I going to get the order to the kitchen? Do you not have a notepad? Did they forget to give you one? Ah! She stares at me with wide open eyes, totally immovable for quite a few seconds. Then he starts to pull something out of his pocket. I totally forgot about it. A lot of dots. How the hell do you for I gotta turn it I gotta turn the mic down. How the hell do you forget something so that simple? Come on, June. You have to use your head more. It's like I say, I don't know whether the fact that I already totally expect things like these from him should make me sad or not. You haven't had any accidents yet, have you? Define accident? Causing some kind of damage to a person or object. Define damage? The hell did you do? It wasn't a big deal, I just... <laughs> Why, did you spill a bowl of soup on a guest? It sounded like that was gonna happen sooner or later anyway. Don't I set a cloth on fire? You did what?! Oh, it's on, not so loud. See a few heads turning towards us because of the sudden noise I made. Clear my throat and readjust. Re yeah. For some reason, I, I see readjust and like read just. For some reason, I don't know. You got it right. I, it was just, I saw it weird. Maybe it's because the line of June's coat happens to go right through there. I readjust myself on my seat. I'm afraid of asking, but how on earth did you accomplish such a feat? It wasn't my fault. So what? The cloth just up and jumped into an open flame on its own. How exactly would that even work? Isn't the whole kitchen area walled off? How'd you even get close enough to a burner to set something on fire? I guess sent some food back so when I went around the wall to explain to Genichiro-kun what the issue was. The cloth I had tucked into the waist of my pants was flapping around a bit and caught on one of the burners. I was lucky I caught it before it torched my clothes. There are so many things wrong here, I don't even know where to start. And first of all, why did he even have a cloth tucked into his pants? You know what? I'm not open to that can of worms. I just know, no matter what question I ask, he'll find a way to surprise me. At least you didn't hurt yourself. That would have been bad. Yeah. That was why I was a bit late to meet you. I was apologizing to everyone and cleaning up the mess I made. Oh, I didn't know that. Now I feel kind of bad for grumbling over him being late. Even if he's the one who nearly set himself on fire. Are you still going back for your next shift, considering what happened? Of course, I took up this job. I have to see it to completion. Even if Ayaka-san was trying to convince me that I didn't have to. I get the feeling she might be trying to get rid of me. Ooh, ouch. If June managed to notice that, then she really must have abandoned all attempts at subtlety. Class rep, I'm sorry you have to deal with this. 
If you dropped out of it, we could spend more time going around the festival and having fun. Yeah, but... But then a lot of other students would have to have their times arranged. They would get their breaks shortened even more. They barely have enough time to join and to enjoy themselves. Mm, I guess that's true. I'm okay to continue. You don't have to worry about that. All things considered, I'm still having fun. You nearly turned yourself into a living torch and you have the guts to tell me you're having fun. Either you're lying or there's something really wrong with you. And that's coming from me. Rutherford's on you staring at me with a really scary face right now. I'm just trying to decide how annoyed I should be right now. I'm sorry, I swear I'm trying to be more careful. Oh, you actually knew I was what I was annoyed over. I'm surprised. You know, sometimes you have this idea that I'm really stupid for some reason. I'm going to pretend I never heard, or never heard that. By the way, didn't you find it weird that Sorokun was wearing a hoodie instead of some kind of uniform? Now you're ignoring me. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I noticed that. But if you look around, none of the waiters are wearing uniforms. That doesn't make it any less weird. Why would you open a restaurant and not have any uniforms? I don't know, but I kind of like it. It gives the place this casual vibe that's really comfortable. They have busts, sculptures, and velvet fabric all over the place and for de in, in the decor. I'm pretty casual. I'm pretty sure casual isn't what they were going for. Which is exactly why it feels so weird. You've been here before, right? Sure have, why do you ask? I'm just thinking how good the cakes here must be. They're kind of pricey. They are, aren't they? But they're really good, so I definitely think it's worth it. I'm glad to hear it. I was a bit worried. By the way, I tried to pick something I thought you'd like for my cheesecake too, so I can give you a few bites. That way you can get to try two desserts. Well, I... What? Can I got your tongue? No, no, it's just... I usually don't like to eat off of other people's plates, but... But... I really like strawberries, so I kind of want to... <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. That's why I ordered them, so feel free. I can't believe you remembered I like strawberry. Well, I can forgive you for not believing it. I do tend to have bad memory, after all. How did you, then? Hmm. I'm not sure why it was. It's because I totally fucking gassed it. I just have a really easy time remembering things when they're about you. For some reason, you always stick out in my mind. <laughs> Isn't that weird? <laughs> blushing, 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 blushy boy, blushy boy. Yeah, it's really weird. All right, I'm back. Sorry for the delay. Sorokun sets the plates neatly in front of us. Even the plates and silverware here are very fancy. Which honestly makes the dress code here feel really weird to me. Wow, the slices are kind of big. Yeah, they're pretty generous. Isn't it neat? It is. I hope you guys enjoy it. Make sure you call me if you need anything else. Thank you, Sorokun! Panda smiles, nodding. You're we welcome. Immediately walks off to go check on other tables. There only seem to be three waiters for over 30 tables, so I guess it must be pretty busy. The place isn't so full that there are no open seats, but it's still quite packed. And for them, they're getting a lot of attention. Oh! Turn to look at June, and the look I can only describe- I, The look I see can only describe, be described as bliss. He's carefully munching on a piece of his shortcake with a big smile on his face. Mm. You liking it? He nods enthusiastically, not even saying a word. How is it? It's so creamy. His voice comes out a little higher than what I used to hearing, and that immediately makes me laugh. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Rutherford's on, you've got to try it. Well, all right, I'm not going to say no to that. I reached my fork so I could take a bite, but before I have the chance to do so, June cuts a piece off with his own and puts the fork in front of my face. Here. 
just to catch me off guard for a second. I start between him and the fork for a few seconds before I shrug and decide to just go with it, biting into the moist cake. Mmm. I never expected it to be good since I came here yesterday, but the assault of flavors in my mouth is enough to take me by surprise. The cake is moist, creamy, and airy. The strawberry brings just a tiny bit of tartness, while the cream is deliciously sweet and light. The cake base itself is surprisingly tender, but also not overly sweet. I feel like we're building up to a punchline where he just has the fork in his mouth, just like, just holding it there. I was afraid the whole thing would be too sweet when I saw the amount of cream in it, but it's so well balanced it could bring me to tears. Isn't it great? It really is. Okay, the punchline did not happen, but still, that would have been funny. You want to have a bite of mine? <laughs> I'd be lying if I said I don't. I haven't even tasted it myself, but I still cut off a piece with my fork and extend it to June like he did with me. Oh. For some reason, the gesture seems to make him really happy. While I'm still holding the fork, he gingerly leans forward on the table and takes a bite. Wow, this is so good too. The tiger puts his left hand on his cheek, chewing in absolute delight. Try my best to stifle a laugh as the whole thing just feels so incredibly silly but fun at the same time. I'm glad you like it. I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Pampering June is so fun. I need to do it more often. That was adorable. Please come back uh, back later. Sir Kun waves us off as we leave the cafe, an enthusiastic smile on his face the whole time. For a guy who's supposed to be shy, he didn't do so badly as a waiter. Well, I'm pretty sure the fact that we're familiar faces helped. You mean the face you're familiar? You mean the face you're a familiar face? Wow. <laughs> the fact you're familiar face helped. You and I both lost track of time while we chatted and ate our desserts. Even something as silly as eating cake can be so much fun, it surprised me. Thank you for treating me, Rutherford, son. I had a lot of fun. I'm glad you did. Is there anything else you want to do? Hmm. I don't really know of any other stalls, I can't really say. I guess that's fair. Let me try to think of something. What time is it anyway? June pulls out a phone, pulls his phone out of his pocket. Unlike pretty much most of the people I know, June still uses an old flip phone. Strapped to it are two keychains. One of them is the one we bought yesterday. I guess he didn't waste any time putting it on. The other is the little tiger keychain I gave him when he was still in the hospital. Hey, he decided to use them as phone straps instead of keychains. Huh? Oh, you mean those? These? You look at the back of his phone for the two keychains that are now tied to his phone like straps. I use my phone a lot more often than I do my keys, and I wanted to always be able to see them and remember about them, so I thought there would be a better way to go at it. Guess you're the sentimental type, huh? I suppose. I had the little tiger on my keys for a while, but I really didn't like having it there. Mizuguchi-san is the one that gave me the idea of hanging them from my phone. I really liked it, so I did it last night. Well, as long as you're happy, I'm happy. <laughs> I am. Especially with the little tiger. That one's my favorite. Oh! I thought it'd be the one from the game. Didn't you say you loved that game? Yeah, I do. But the one, but that one is just something I bought for myself. This one's a present you gave me. It's much more precious to me. Oh, that was a heartbeat. Oh, I see. That's pretty nice of you to say, June. He nods enthusiastically, flipping his phone open. Hmm. We spent over an hour at the cafe. I have less than two hours until my shift starts again. Oh, that little time. It's not that bad. Besides, we still have the rest of the festival to spend together. I guess that's true. What times will you be free tomorrow? Oh, uh, I really won't have much of a break tomorrow. What? You're kidding! We were really strapped for help since most of the class bailed on serving food. Every single one of the waiters is having a day where we have no breaks. Mine is tomorrow. That's awful. I'm going to walk up to class rep and Kyoko and give them a both a piece of my mind. 
Sure, the guy who bailed and is one of the reasons I have to pull that kind of shift is going to complain that I have to pull that kind of shift. I can see, already see that going well. Damn, when he pulls a snarky face, he really fucking pulls it. Gah! Sometimes he can have a surprisingly sharp tongue. Sorry. <laughs> you don't need to apologize, I'm not complaining. I'm the one who wanted to do this. I just don't want you giving them grief over something they have no power to change. Besides, it'd be a bit hypocritical. Well, a lot hypocritical. <laughs> right. I didn't think of it from that scenario. Well, you do have a tendency not to. Hey! <laughs> what? I'm just saying. You're lucky you're cute, otherwise I'd give you a piece of my mind too. Oh, oh, blushing. I'm not sorry that Flynn's little retort ain't gonna change my mind. Uh, hmm. I wonder where we could go right now. I know there's a second year class that's putting on a play. Maybe we could watch that. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, they only do it three times a day, and I think the afternoon one's already underway. <sighs> Next time would only be during the night. Aww. How about we go watch it later? You're gonna have a break during the last day of the festival, right? Yeah. I'll get off right after lunch times and won't have to go in anymore. Yeah. Every single stall is gonna be closed for the bonfire and the fireworks show. I can't wait for the fireworks. We have to see if we can get everyone together for it. I want to go watch it from the roof. His eyes are nearly sparkling as he says that. His tail is lashing wildly behind him. I guess the idea must have him really excited. Why the roof? I want to watch it from the highest place possible so I'll have the best view. Oh, is that why? Bad news for you, though. The roof is kept locked during the festival to avoid any students slipping off to go there. What? School had lots of issues with students going upstairs in droves with plates of food and whatnot, and just leaving them scattered around, and so they started locking it. This was before I even started going there. Must have been a while ago. Oh, I really wanted to see it from the roof. Hmm. Maybe she wish she could get me a key? No, I'll see what I can do. What, really? I just said I'm going to see what I can do. I don't know that I'll be able to. Yeah, I'm counting on you, rutherford son. You didn't hear a single word I said. I just said, didn't you? Well, this comes to worse. I'll try to learn to pick a lock with a paperclip, I guess. How hard could it be? I'll just practice on my old padlock eye until I get it. Hopefully I won't need to do it, though. Anyway, how about we go walk by the courtyard and see what other displays they have? Yeah! He nods in empathetically, almost jumping on the spot. Sex has energy. Uh, whenever he's happy is, or excited, is, really gives me life. See, I'm like, this makes my day. Let's see. I seem to recall a few students doing an open air flower garden. Might not be much, but you might like to like seeing and smelling the flowers. Oh, that sounds great. Almost everything sounds great to you, though. A few hours later. As much as I love the school festival, the constant noise and always being surrounded by so many people gives me a headache. As soon as I arrive home, I flop down on my bed and just let myself be lazy there for a few minutes. I hope June's over doing okay. It seemed like the festival got more and more crowded as the hours went by. Just make sure I'll shoot him a message. Hey, how was your second shift? Hopefully no more accidents, ha ha ha. Just checking up to see how you're doing. Message me when you can. Oh, he answered right away. I'm helping them clean up here before going home. It was pretty okay. I had another rude customer today, which kind of sucked, though. Oh, no. Was he really nasty to you? Kinda. But then Ayako-san yelled him out of the room. After that, word kind of spread that everyone was in their best behavior, lol. I can totally picture class rep doing something like that. It's a pretty scary thought, actually. I'm glad things went better. Just take care of yourself going home. I got back a few minutes ago, and I'm just lazing in bed. I wouldn't mind having a soft bed to lie on, Rutherford son. Your house is closer than mine. Let me see you let me use yours. 
Hold the fuck up. Did he just invite himself to sleep with us? Okay. Pfft. I snicker reading that one message. I just pictured June acting like a house cat and kicking me out of my bed so we can have it all for himself. I don't really feel like sleeping on the floor, so I'll have to pass. Aw, oh, we could have just shared. Mm-hmm. I shoot open as I read the message. Look at it for a few seconds, not knowing how to respond. As soon as I prepare myself to respond, I receive another one. Oh, Kyokasan is giving me the evil eye because I'm texting, lol. I'll talk to you later. I decide to just toss my phone onto the bed and roll to the other side. Before I notice that sleep begins to wash over me like a, like countless waves. Yawning, I decide to take off my shirt and just go to sleep. June the 1th. The 1th of the... Jesus, those fucking petals. Well, we will see day 19 in the next episode. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, I have been the trained on... Well, I, don't even, I didn't even say anything about what happened. I'm just jumping straight into an outro. Um, It's kind of cool seeing... See, I like... I fucking like this route, man. I am recording at like 2 in the morning, though, so I'm, I don't really have much to say about it. It's cute. I really think it's cute. They're really cute together, and I think it's cute. And I hope they do the dance together, and it's cute. And it's just cute, man. Just really cute. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Let's do it. Do it. Let's do it right. Thank you all very much for watching this episode of Tennessee's. On the next one, we will continue to see what we do on day 19 for the festival with June. Hopefully we dance with them. Hopefully we see the fireworks. Hopefully we can get onto the roof. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, I have been trained and professional. You are not, and I will see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye, bye.